Father God, thank you for your word this morning, God. I, I, I am as un, unknowledgeable about your word, about your heart, as, as anybody else in this place, God. Lord, I surrender my thought processes, I surrender my mind, my will into your precious hands this morning and I pray that you would use me to speak to them and that even as I speak, I pray that you would convict my heart as well, God, that it will be something that will uh, encourage and edify each and every one of us this morning. We give you the praise, God, we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said an Amen. 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 Now, we, we, we know this story over and over and over. We've seen it in Jesus movies. We've seen it, uh, we've read this so many times. You've heard sermons about it. There is, uh, most people would even know the accurate uh, reference of the scripture. If I would ask you, where, tell me the story or the reference of where, of that particular place where Jesus got baptized, you would even know the reference. You know, that's how well we are acquainted with this particular scripture. But uh, this morning, what, what we're gonna do is just go into it a little more deeper, okay? I mean, not that I have any profound things to say, but you know what, we, we're just gonna study the text. The, the, you know, just study what, what it would mean to us precisely. Can we do verse by verse? Verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. Okay. Now, when I speak, everybody looks into my eyes. Okay. Uh, you can take down notes if you would like to, but when I'm sharing, please look at me so I can speak to you. Now, the first verse says, then Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan. Now, if you if you remember the story of Jesus, Jesus was born in Are you are you doubting that? <laughs> Sorry, you have to you have to read the Christmas story again. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and and this is what happened. You know the you know how it, the the wise men came and they worshipped Jesus and they went and the angel took Jesus. Uh, the, I mean the angel warned Joseph and took Jesus out of Bethlehem. Do you know that? So so that so that Jesus will not be killed as well. So Jesus went to Egypt. Jesus along with Joseph and Mary they went to Egypt and he was there for two years and they returned back from Egypt. Um, and when they returned back, the Lord very clearly uh, warned Joseph to not go back to Bethlehem, instead to go to Galilee. So he went to this, this city called Nazareth in Galilee. Galilee is like a district or like a province. Uh, Nazareth is like a city. You know how Karnataka and Bangalore is? That is how, uh, that is how Nazareth is in, in Galilee. And they went, they lived in Nazareth in the city of Nazareth. Uh, that is where Jesus grew up. The Galileans, they knew Jesus as the uh, son of the carpenter. He was a very famous carpenter apparently because everybody knew that hey he's the son of that that that, that carpenter you know like 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 we would say uh, you know how how would we refer to Zoe or Sarah uh, she is uh, uh, the, the pastor Sandeep's daughter you know uh, uh, that way Jesus knew uh, was known as the carpenter's son all over Galilee that was the place where Jesus grew up that was the tradition in which Jesus grew up that was where Jesus's culture was formed that was where Jesus learned his languages. That is where Jesus did his uh, Bible education. That is where Jesus, uh, you know, uh, the foundation uh, was laid for Jesus in the first 30 years of his life. That is where Jesus lived. But guess what? His ministry did not begin in Galilee. His ministry began at Jordan. Jesus had to move from Galilee to Jordan for his breakthrough to come. The sermon this morning that I, I want to preach is, uh, is titled Walking into Your Open Heaven. Everybody say that. Walking, walking, just repeat after me. Walking into my open heaven. 
So this is the first key for you to enter into your open heaven, to walk into your open heaven. You have to move out of Galilee and go to the Jordan. Now Galilee represents a place where, 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 where you've been in the past. It represents a place where you have, uh, you know, your, your ideologies have been formed. It represents your old pattern of thought. It, it represents a lot of things that will stand in the way of you entering into God's promises for your life. Now, if you want to experience an open heaven, you have to say goodbye Galilee and hello Jordan. You know, Jordan is this place where Jesus was baptized. Jordan is the place where, where uh, you know, there were many who, who, who would come to be baptized. Jordan is a place where, you know, uh, you would see in the Old Testament also, it, would, it, is, a, it is a place of significant uh, change where, where they go from, they, they, they cross the river and they go into their promised land. They, they, when, when Elisha, he, he, he crossed and experienced a, a, a touch of the Holy Spirit. Whenever Jordan is crossed, it, ha it, is, it is written that you are going into your next level with God. If you're going to your next level in your relationship with God, you're going to your next level in your understanding of who God is, you're going to your next level of, of walking with God. Once you cross Jordan, you have entered a new level. Amen? So, so you have to move out of Galilee. You cannot sit in Galilee and expect Jordan to redirect towards Galilee. Right? You have to get out of Galilee. In fact, Galilee to Jordan River is about 77 kilometers. And you can imagine, right, how, how Jesus would have traveled from Galilee to Jordan. Uh, you know, if we have to take a... If he had a bike that drives at 60 kilometers per hour, it still will take close close to an hour and 15 minutes to 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 go 77. Jesus didn't have that. Jesus, even if he had a, a donkey or anything like that, he, he it was effort. Basically, what I'm trying to say is it was hard work for Jesus to leave Galilee. He had to say goodbye to his mom. He had. His mom was dependent on Jesus and he had to say goodbye to his mom. He had, Jesus had literal brothers and sisters. He had to say goodbye to them. Jesus had, uh, you know, his friends when he grew up. He had to say goodbye to all of them. Jesus had to say, no, no, none of those were bad things for, for your kind information. The, the Galilee was not necessarily bad, but if Jesus had to enter into his next level of life, he has to cross a Jordan where he will be baptized. Amen. So many a times God would take us all in through that through that process where, where God would stop us, where God would not give us our breakthrough till we say goodbye to the old things, till we say goodbye to the old ways of life, till we say goodbye to the traditions in which we've been brought up, till we till we say goodbye to those friends that are that are stopping us from from walking with God, till we say goodbye to those relationships or, or to those jobs offers to anything that would stop you from entering into your destiny you have to say goodbye goodbye Galilee I'm going to Jordan amen everybody say that goodbye Galilee I'm going to Jordan now I, I, I know you uh, you you would say okay uh, press for what am I doing wrong I'm not doing anything wrong yes yes you might not be doing anything wrong but if you are called into greatness you would have to say goodbye to Galilee amen you would have to there will come a point where you would have to say no 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 I am not supposed to be a Galilean all my life yeah I I am called for greatness I am not called to be where I am I am called walk under open heavens. Heavens did not open when Jesus was in Galilee. Heavens opened when Jesus crossed Jordan. Amen. Yeah. And, and, and I want you to identify your Galilee. Identify your Galilee. Identify all the things that, you, that, is, that is holding you back. 
everything of your past that is holding you back from walking under an open heaven. Leave your past in the past and, and press on to God who is your future. I, I tweeted this early this morning. If you've been following me on Twitter, you would, you would read my tweets. Uh, you know, I, I, I said, leave your past in the past. There's, we all have a past, right? Anybody over here who were created like Adam was created, fresh, new, no past, no, no experiences, just out of the blue, God just came and created you. You don't have a father or mother, nobody here, right? We all have a past, we all have hurts. We all have emotions that got rubbed the wrong way. We all have failures. We all have things that we regret about, right? We do, but, but we have to learn to leave out of the past and, and press on to God. Why? Because God is our future. Amen. In God, you will find your future. Not in your job, not in your life partner, not in your uh, relationships or family. No, 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 no. Press on to God because God is your future. When you look at God's face, you're looking at your destiny. When you're looking at, uh, you know, when, when you walk with God, you, you're walking into your future. You're, you're not living in your past. Press on to God because in God is your future. Is there anybody in this place who is struggling with things of the past? Is there anybody else? Anybody here? I, 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 I am very, very uh, much led in my spirit to pray this over you. Some of you especially are, are seeing dreams of the, the things that have happened in the past. Way beyond in the past. In Jesus' mighty name. Can we all just pray for two minutes? Everybody. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I release the Spirit of God to break every stronghold of Galilee. Every stronghold of the past that is stopping them from entering into the future. In Jesus' mighty name. I break that stronghold in Jesus' mighty name. I break that dream. I break the thoughts. I break the, uh, the, 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 the addictions. I break those things that has, been, that has been telling your children that they cannot grow up. In Jesus' mighty name. I release them into their destiny, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. And, 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 and this is the beautiful thing. Jesus leaves Galilee for Jordan. Now, Jordan, this is what the next verse says. It says, but John protested strenuously, having in mind to prevent him saying, Jesus, no, no, it is I who have need to be baptized by you. And why do you come to me? It was very clear that Jesus had come for a baptism. Jesus had come to John for a baptism. Now in the Bible, there are two types of baptisms that the Bible talks about uh, that we all know about very clearly. One is the baptism of of water and the other is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, in those days, before Jesus' death, there was a baptism of John, which we don't have anymore. The baptism of John was for the remission of sins and uh, post Jesus' death, Jesus said, go and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. That is the literal water immersion baptism that we believe in. And the next is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. John prophesied about Jesus saying, uh, I baptize you with water, but, but he who comes after me, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. fire. There, is a, there, there is a separate baptism called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you, you will be set on fire. You know, the water will, will you know, it represents your old being cleansed, or cleansed away. It represents you being buried into Jesus and raised again to life. But, but your, the fire, what it represents is that from this day onwards, when, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is, there is this energy inside of you. Have you seen the, the old engines that run on coal? You know, they, 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 run on, they run on fire. Inside of it, it, it burns. And as long as there is fire, the, the engine would run. And, and it is the fire of the Holy Spirit that keeps us running. Not that one baptism that you got in the year 1987. No, no, no. It is the fire of the Holy Spirit. It is the baptism of the Holy Spirit inside of you that keeps you running every day, day in and day out. But the G, this is, these are the two kind of baptisms 
baptisms that we are very familiar about. But Jesus goes on to say there is a third kind of baptism in, in I think, Matthew uh, 22, 20 verse 22. I shared about this a couple of Sundays back where John and James comes to Jesus and they say, uh, we want to sit on your right and your left. And Jesus said, are you willing to be baptized with the baptism that I am about to be baptized? Uh, are you willing to suffer the kind of suffering that I am about to be, uh, I am about to undergo? Are you willing? Are you okay with that? And they said, uh, you are, yes, yes, I am willing. I am okay with that. I am uh, willing to go through the suffering. So in other words, there is a third baptism. That is the baptism of suffering. You know, many preachers don't talk about this. Many teachers don't talk about this. But trust me. If you are living in this world, there is a baptism of suffering that, that you might have to go through at times. But it is always, after the baptism comes your promised land. Whenever you cross the Jordan, you enter into your promised land. So whenever God puts you through suffering. In fact, last night I was talking with my wife and, 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 and I was telling her, Hey, I saw this thing coming against this person. Uh, so this person is about to enter into his next level and she was like surprised she said how is it that only means that the person is about to be depressed or discouraged i said no 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 whenever god would put suffering god would allow suffering in somebody's life it is god is just setting that person up for a double blessing Amen. do you know the story of job God was not trying to, you know, give him suffering and, hey, wow, wow, let's enjoy, see, let's see, let's enjoy Job's stench. No, 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 no. God was setting him up for a double blessing that had to follow after he went through Jordan, after he went through the baptism of suffering. There was a, there was a double blessing that God was setting him up to receive that baptism of suffering so when you go through sufferings when you go through questions trials challenges guys rejoice in God the Bible says consider it, consider it a joy enjoy it because because great is your reward because great is what you're about to enter into after this Jordan amen what are the three kinds of baptisms one is the baptism of water if anybody in this place is not baptized in water i want you to ask god to 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 reveal this very very clearly to you and and come and, and let's let's baptize you in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit yeah. if there is anybody in this place who have not received the baptism of the holy spirit trust me you need it you really really need it that is the fire that keeps you running that is the energy that keeps you going every day and in fact baptism of the holy spirit is not something that you do just once in a lifetime the bible says be filled in the spirit continually every day monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday every day you have got to wake up and say god Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Father, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And, and, and there will be times when God will allow a baptism of suffering in your life. And please understand, John and James, if they had to be great, Jesus said, do you want to be great? Yes, there is a baptism that you might have to go through. You know, ordinary people who don't want to be great, who, who want to just live ordinary lives, they don't have to undergo this baptism. But you want greatness, you will have to undergo something more severe. But, but when you have gone through it, God will release a double portion of everything you have lost. And everybody said an amen. 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 My question to you this morning is, are you willing to be baptized? In any of these three areas, what is the area that you, you, are, you are struggling to surrender before God? You know, what is that one area? Are you willing to be baptized by God? You know, this is one of the things, you know, Jesus had no need to be baptized. If there is one person who did not need baptism, it's Jesus. Tell me, tell me who would need baptism? The, the sinners, the, especially the baptism of John. It was for the sinners, for the remission of sins. It was for, uh, you know, the, the tax collectors, the prostitutes, the, you know, the, in today's day and language, we would say the guys who go to the club, the guys who drink, the guys who smoke. 
It's, it's for them. It's, no, no, no. Jesus was perfect, holy, blameless. But Jesus said, I want to be baptized. I'm willing to humble myself. I'm willing to surrender it all at Jordan. I have left my Galilee and I have come to Jordan that I may be baptized. Amen. Is, is God pushing you out of your Galilee? That is a sign that God has kept the Jordan in front of you. You know, there is one prayer that I pray every morning when I wake up, every day that I, that I walk, every minute that I'm praying, the first thing that I pray is God, baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Because it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that gives me an energy, a fresh fire, a fresh flame to, to walk, to, to, to live my life, to, to stay. To be victorious against sin, to be victorious against uh, all the trials that come my way. It's the, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that allows me to walk in the fullness of life. And the question is, are you willing? Are you ready to ask God? Are you ready to seek God for the same? I believe that our church will be a church that will be overflowing with the baptisms of the Holy Spirit. Every Sunday morning we will have baptisms the Holy Spirit. There will not be a, a single person in this church who will not be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Not just water but Holy Spirit and with fire. That everybody in this place will be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Verse 15. But Jesus replied to him and said, permit it just now. For this is the fitting way for both of us to fulfill all righteousness that is to perform completely whatever is right and then he permitted him in other words when John stopped Jesus John said no 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 you don't need this and Jesus said no 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 let it let it happen as of now this has I, I have to fulfill all righteousness now I don't know how many of you uh, were careful enough to listen to uh, Alex Uncle's sermon last week just in case you missed Sunday last Sunday you can find the video on YouTube and you can uh, watch the sermon online uh, this is one thing that he said which made so much of uh, much of impact on my heart he said we have to be friends of righteousness Amen. Friends of righteousness. Somebody who would, who would love righteousness. Somebody who would, who would pursue righteousness. Friends of righteousness. Friends of righteousness would automatically mean that you are an enemy of unrighteousness. You, you hate unrighteousness. You hate unholiness. You hate the other kind of life. And, and Jesus said, hey, hey, before Jesus had an open heaven, he had to fulfill all righteousness all righteousness now in the New Testament we we believe that our righteousness does not come from our works but our righteousness comes from Christ what he has done for us on the cross when he said it is finished it is done you know so our righteousness comes from that but does it mean that we we can be we can be lazy in our living does it mean that we can go about sinning does it mean that we can go about doing the kind of things that we be? no absolutely no the Bible says we are saved by grace and through faith not by grace alone trust me we are not saved by grace alone and and a faith without works is dead now we have the Christ righteousness but but you know our response to God to that righteousness in faith includes works because when we are not living in righteousness that faith is dead that faith towards God is dead can I, can I invite you to, to be friends of righteousness? It's a totally different thing. Uh, you know, somebody has been talking to my wife. Uh, she, she's been struggling with a lot of uh, relationships, relationship issues and addictions. And, 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 and my wife asked me, hey, what can I tell, tell her? Uh, what should I tell her to, you know, uh, to, to get her rid of this habit? I said, consider it as an enemy. You, you cannot tolerate it. How, how do you treat your enemy? How do you treat your enemy? Do you have enemies? Well, Christians are not supposed to have enemies, is it? Do you have an enemy? Run as fast as you can. <laughs> Somebody said, run as fast as you can. That's, that's good. 
that's good. You know, I, okay, can I, can I give you a little, little glimpse into my, my gallery? Okay, I, I grew up, uh, I had an elder brother uh, who was uh, a cousin and uh, you know, we, we we used to hang out together, and we uh, so because and he used to be like three four years older than me, and because he was in uh, in my school, in my same school, it used to be it used to be really uh, uh, a privilege for me. I can do anything, and my brother will be there to protect me. You know, my brother will be there to hit people on my behalf, and you know stuff like that. So I grew up as a gunda, you know, in, in Hindi uh, or as a rowdy. You know, in English, how do I say it? As a, uh, as a mini small decoy. <laughs> huh? As a thug, yeah, that's the right word. You know, fifth standard, I could beat down an uh, eighth standard guy. I could, when I was in my sixth, seventh standard, I could beat down a tenth standard guy. I don't have the same strength today, so please don't try it uh, on me now. But, but then I, I, I used to be, it, I, I realized that it's all in the heart, you know, that you know, if you want to beat down somebody, you can. Uh, but, that that was that is that is how I used to be, and I, I still remember um, that once I was I was surrounded by a group of guys, and they were they were all abusing me and they were beating me up because I had better one of their friends, and and, and all of a sudden this one guy he, he hit me over close to my head, and my specs flew off. And for me, anybody who touches my specs is my enemy. And I went crazy. I got, I, I was like a demon manifesting, technically speaking, but I jumped out of my cycle. I, I held that one guy and I tore off his shirt like this, like, like his buttons came ripping off. And, and the other seven, eight guys, all of them, they just, they just ran away seeing this, seeing this strength, you know? And, and, and that is how, that is, that is how I treated my enemy. I will, I will show no mercy. Even when my wife puts a little water on my spectacles, I'm like, I just, I just go for my <laughs> No, you can't do that. You know, she, she doesn't use the specs, so she doesn't. But I, I, it goes crazy because it, you know, I, I just, that one thing, it kind of irritates me so much. And I treat that person as uh, my enemy, not, not literally, not my guy, please don't <laughs> misunderstand me. But, but that is how I, I, I treated that one guy who touched my spectacles. Would you treat unrighteousness as your enemy? How would your response be? How would your response be? Would you be violent in protecting yourself against unrighteousness? Would you be would you be aggressive in protecting yourself against unholiness? That would you would you raise your voice like a lion would raise his voice in the jungle to to to, to tell his enemies that I am the king of the jungle? I am you know you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know when when how, how do you treat your weaknesses? Don't treat it with mercy. Don't tolerate it. Treat it as your enemy. You be a friend of righteousness. By your fruit, we will know that you belong to Jesus. Not, not by the fact that you have a membership in BRC or by the fact that you give time. No, no, no. By your fruit, we will know the tree. We will know that you belong to Jesus. Can we, can we cultivate righteousness in our lives? I want you to take a moment and just, just ask God, what is, what is the one area where, where I'm struggling this day? What is the one area where I need, I need to surrender, where I don't, I don't fulfill all righteousness? Where I don't fulfill all righteousness? That is stopping me from entering into my open heaven. That is stopping me from entering into my destiny. What is that one thing that is stopping me? What is that one thing that is stopping me? That I am not able to fulfill? What is that one righteousness that I am not able to fulfill? Father, we surrender that one thing into your precious hands. Amen. And I pray this over your children that there will be not a single person over here who would tolerate unrighteousness, who would tolerate uh, wickedness in their life, who would, they would treat the, the unrighteous things as if it's an enemy to them, God. Everybody in this place, Lord, that they will be friends of righteousness. 
that they will fulfill all righteousness. I pray this over their lives. I pray this over their walk with you. I pray this over their spiritual lives. In, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Philippians 1 verse 11. May you abound in and be filled with the fruits of righteousness, of right standing with God and right doing, which comes, this is, how, this is where it comes from, it comes through Jesus Christ in your life. The day you receive Jesus Christ, it automatically got to come out of your life. Fruits of righteousness should come out of your life. If, if, if that is not coming, I have to ask you, are you really saved? Because if you're really saved, you belong to Jesus and you're one with Jesus and the Spirit of God is in you and then fruit will come automatically. You don't have to you know, struggle to, to bring out the fruit. No, no, no. It will come automatically. Do you have Jesus in your life? If you don't, can I, invite, can I ask you to re-invite Jesus into your heart? Can I ask you to invite the Spirit of God into your heart and say, God, I am sorry for my galleries. I am sorry for my past. I, I repent of my unrighteousness and I, and I give my life into your precious hands this day. And I pray that you would come and take, my, take over my life and that you, that you would bear fruit in my life in these days to come. Fruits of righteousness, like Philippians 1 verse 11 talks about, fruits of righteousness in my life. Amen. And the last word, second last verse, this is what it says, it says, and when Jesus was baptized, and everybody say Jesus was baptized. And when Jesus was baptized, once again, Jesus, when Jesus was baptized, and this is what happened when Jesus was baptized. He went up at once out of the water, and behold, the heavens were open, and he saw, and John saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting and, and alighting on him. Immediately, as Jesus crossed his Jordan, as Jesus crossed his baptism, the, 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 this is what happened after that. Heavens were opened above Jesus. And that heavens remained open for the rest of Jesus' life and ministry on this planet. Je and when Jesus should walk into the grave of Lazarus, he would look at that open heaven and say, Father, I know you hear me. I know there is an open heaven above me. And when I speak, Lazarus will come forward. And, and then he would be at the sea and there is waves all around he would he would stand up under open heavens there were there might be waves and winds all around him but there is an open heaven above Jesus and, and he would speak peace be still and and the and, and the waves will die out the wind will die out when he is in the midst of a, a crowd and he, and he will find this one man who is who is who is for the last 38 years he would walk up to him and say get up and walk because he knows that he is walking under an open heaven amen if you are walking under an open heaven there is nothing in this world that would stop you Everybody said an amen. amen. There is nothing in this world that can be an impossibility for you. There is nothing in this world. But it doesn't start directly with that. It doesn't start with, with, with your ministry and your walking in an open heaven. It starts with the effort that you take in leaving your Galilee, in saying goodbye to your Galilee, in, in walking out of that place, in, in coming to this place where you say, God, baptize me. Baptize me in everything that needs to be baptized me. Let we fulfill all righteousness and then when you cross that Jordan you will experience an open heaven and I want to declare open heaven over every area of your life starting with number one your walk with God I, I pray that that you will experience open heavens in your walk with God 
Amen. You know what that means? That you will not struggle to walk with God. That you will not struggle in your prayer life. That you will not struggle in your reading and, and, and meditating and studying the word of God. That you will not struggle in your relationship with God. That you will prosper in your relationship with God. That when you worship God, that all heavens will just open up and come down. I was just listening to this song by Jason Upton. Uh, what is it called? Do you see what I see, right? If you, if you, if you to just go to the, uh, just go to YouTube and search for the the story of uh, of, of of this song. And this is what happened. Jason Upton, he he, I think it's an evening time or early morning time. He just goes to the piano and he starts worshiping God. And and suddenly, and it was all getting recorded. And suddenly, there was this there was this sound of. Uh, somebody singing along with him and uh, Jason Upton thought you know hey or even the guys who were on the sound they thought you know there is somebody on the stage because the stage was dark but somebody saw a, a, a guy who was some some foot tall I don't remember the exact uh, uh, how many six foot seven foot I don't remember that but he, he saw this guy who was tall standing behind and, and, and singing with, with Jason Upton and when they found the recording they could hear a supernatural sound. It's on YouTube. You can buy the song on iTunes. You can check it out. It's, I, is it called Do You? Fly. It's called Fly. That, that, that's the name of the song. Just search for Fly Jason Upton and you can hear angels singing along with Jason Upton. It's recorded. Can you imagine that when, you know, I pray that that would be your relationship with God. That when you start to worship God every morning. The angels would say, hey guys, let's just go down. There, you know, there will be an open heaven above your house. And angels would say, hey, let's go down. Let me go and worship with Leon. Let me go and worship with John. Let me, let me go and sit, play along with Meta. Let me, let, me, let, 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 let me sing along with them. I, 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 I really find their worship to God so, so glo God glorified. I'm going to go and worship with them. The same with when you open your Bible and, and you start to read your word. The Holy Spirit would just come down and, the, and the, you would receive revelation. Revelation, divine, deep, profound revelations from the Word of God about the Son of God. You will receive it. How would you receive it? You have to come to this place where you cross your Jordans, where you cross, where you leave the unrighteousness and, and you, you fulfill all righteousness and you, you surrender yourself before God and say, God, I want an open heaven. I'm in my walk with you. If, if you have everything else, but you don't have an open heaven in your relationship with God, trust me, friends, you are an utter failure. Because heaven doesn't count all of that. We are created for fellowship with God. We are created to walk with God. We are created to enjoy God. And, and if that is not there, everything else is meaningless. Everything else is lost. Second, I am praying that you will have an open heaven over your family and your relationships. Somebody said an amen. amen. Over every family and relationships. I think it was this morning when God very divinely told us to pray for families in church, for, for, for husbands and wives in church, for, for divine peace to uh, be there in, 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 in families between husband and wives. And I believe that in these days to come, our church will be a place where there is open heaven over our families. That every family will, will experience open heaven. You know what that means? There will be abundance of joy. There will be abundance of love. There will be abundance of peace. There will be abundance of kindness. Gentle words in your family. And there will say the same will exist in your relationships with other people, not just your family. And, uh, you know, when you walk out, when you're with your neighbors, you know that you will experience an open heaven. That you will experience God giving you favor over your relationships. Amen. Let's pray that we will not experience, uh, we will not experience, we will not struggle to live our families. Amen. Not a single person. I, I, I am praying that in the days to come, not a single person in this church. There will not be a single divorce in this church. There will not be a single, uh, you know, backsliding uh, child in the church. That every, that our families will be godly examples. Amen. 
that after there will be open heavens over every family. That as a family, you would go to God and say, God, take us through the Jordan so we can experience an open heaven above my family and my relationship. Third, over your ministry. You know, I don't know what kind of ministry you do, but trust me, every one of us is a minister. Okay, every one of us is a minister. I might be ministering in BRC or Ablaze or whatever. You might be ministering in TCS, Infosys, FSH, wherever God has placed you. You have to be a minister there. You are not placed to be just an employee there. You are called as a minister of righteousness, as a minister of, of reconciliation, wherever God has placed you. Through your testimony, through your words, through your, through your behavior, attitude, you are called to minister. Ministry. Every one of us has a ministry and and trust me You need an open heaven above your ministry that, that there will be fruit in your ministry that when you when you share gospel with somebody God has to vindicate it by convicting that person's heart. Amen. That is called having an open heaven over your ministry. That's the third thing that I'm praying to God for over our church. And the fourth thing is that you will have an open heaven over your career and your finances. Somebody said an amen to that too. Amen. We need good carriers. We need good finances. We need Josephs in this house, you know, who would who would be sitting with prime ministers and advising prime ministers. We need Daniels in this house who, who would be sitting with presidents and and and, 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 and counseling them and, and giving them advices. And we, we need wealthy people in this church. So I'm gonna pray that God would give you an open heaven over your carriers, over your the job that there will be divine favor that you would not struggle basically that is the meaning of having an open hand that you would not struggle in doing what you do that there will be there will be divine favor when you go to your workplace and, and it will be easy to work there it will be easy to have a good rapport with your boss it will be easy to to experience the goodness of God over uh, your finances and is there anybody in this place who has a debt I know a few who has but is there anybody else who has it then? I'm going to pray that in this year, before this year ends, the devil, that our church will be 100% debt free. Amen. Amen. That God would open heavens above our finances in a way like never before. That every credit card bills, every loan that needs to be paid off, it will be paid off from heaven. And, and, and we're going to pray for a debt free 2014. Amen. Amen. We, you don't have to wait for the next 30 years of your life to be debt free. In the year 2014 you would walk out debt free in Jesus my name because we will experience an open heaven over your career and over your finances. There will be favor over your money. Amen. Amen. The last verse I, and, and I conclude with this and behold a voice from heaven said this is my son my beloved in whom I delight. That is the that is the end of our lives. That is the purpose of our lives. Where, where God would say, "This is the Son in whom I well, in, in whom I delight." This is how it happened. The heavens opened. Uh, the Holy Spirit came and descended <coughs> on Jesus, and then God looked at him and said, "This is my Son in whom I delight." I have. I have written a prayer over here. Would you would you kindly write it down in your phones or, or in your papers, wherever. I want you to pray this prayer for the next seven days. Not as a mantra, but as something that, that, that you really want God to do in your life. I, I, you know, that you pray this prayer every morning. In fact, I tweeted this a couple of days back. I, I want you to pray this every morning. You know, the first is, Holy Spirit, descend on me. For it is your presence that makes me like Jesus, the Son. And it's the Son in whom the Father delights. Can I repeat it again? Holy Spirit, descend on me. For it is your presence on me that makes me like Jesus, the Son. And it's the Son in whom the Father delights. 
And when the Father sees Jesus in you, the Father sees, looks at you and, and sees Jesus in your life. How can the Father see Jesus in you? It's when you, when the Holy Spirit descends on you, when the Holy Spirit transforms your life, you, you begin to look like Jesus to the Father and, and in you, in you, in you will He delight. In the Son will He delight. And that is our prayer this morning, Father. Can we all just stand up in God's presence and, and, and just pray this prayer? Just pray it after me. And, and let's just conclude this service with praying, God, we, we want that your, that your Spirit will descend upon us, upon each and every one of us, that we will experience, uh, that, that we will experience the transforming power and that we will be like Jesus.